Oh, big right, right hand. hand. Big cut. And a quick look at our rules of combat based on three five-minute rounds and, of course, five five-minute rounds for championship bouts. And, of course, in the amateur division, that changed to three three-minute rounds and, of course, five three-minute rounds for championship bouts in the amateur division. It's based on the 10-point must system, judging criteria, and to get things started, we'll go ahead and throw it to the cage. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Coeur d'Alene Casino Resort Hotel, Worley, Idaho, King of the Cage and General Tire present this three-round bout in the welterweight division. Your referee in charge of the action, Tom Supnett. Introducing first in the Lucas Oil blue corner, standing five feet ten inches tall, he represents Sacred Scars MMA. Ladies and gentlemen, from Moses Lake, Washington, presenting Austin Knight Knight Williams. His opponent across the cage, fighting out of our general tire, red corner, stands at 5 feet 11 inches tall. He represents Team Iron Man MMA. Ladies and gentlemen, from Spokane, Washington, presenting Robert. Johnson! Here we go, Robert Johnson versus Austin Williams. We apologize for that camera uh, technical difficulty there. And immediately shoots in, and now taking some nasty shots from the top. Austin Williams just trying to stay busy here, trying to finish things quickly here in round one. And remember, this is scheduled for three three-minute rounds in the amateur division. As Austin Williams continues to hold on. Robert continues to fight from the bottom, getting those, trying to get some hooks going, but that ain't quite working for him. And it looks like Austin Williams is going to work and trying to finish this. Robert Johnson in a little bit of trouble here. As Austin Williams now takes the back of Johnson. Johnson struggling just a bit here. Austin Williams gets up in the full mount position. Johnson just looking for a way out of this. Hasn't been easy for him at all. Robert Johnson trying to reverse things, but can't quite do it. As Austin Williams postures up, lands a nice elbow there. And more to follow up. Robert Johnson just trying to hold on to those arms. Trying to keep Williams from landing some more shots from the top. And Williams looks like he's gonna stand up out of this and give up an ankle, probably in the process. And now Robert Johnson takes the back of Williams. And they reverse things. Johnson trying to shine. Coming through here. 
Things are changing quickly here. Wow. 57 seconds remains. And now Austin Williams is in a world of trouble, but now he's about to reverse things. But now Robert Johnson is not giving up position here. Williams is in a bit of trouble now. Man, this thing, this has just changed so quickly between these two. Robert Johnson continues to take the back, finishing strong here. I think we have a low shot there, but it's hard to tell from that angle for the ref. Spinning around, Robert Johnson trying to finish on top here. And what a great way to finish the round. Austin Williams reverses things, and that is it. Round one is over. So great job going back and forth between these two. Let's take a look at the highlights. Williams comes in strong, takes the back of Robert Johnson. There was times where I questioned Johnson if he was gonna hang in there after taking so many shots. Williams from the top, elbow, shots, mixing it up. And then of course, somewhere in the middle of the fight, things started to change real quick. Johnson takes the back of Williams. Williams starts to panic a bit here. Like, wait a second, I was in control. But then all of a sudden, Johnson takes control. And this may have possibly even the fight out, the round. But as Austin switched things around there, you can see some more shots. That could have been the split factor, determining factor of the winner of that round as we head off in round two. Robert Johnson in the red tape gloves, Austin Williams in the blue tape gloves. And Austin looks like he's hurt a bit. Now trying to set up the guillotine. Robert Johnson looking to pop his head out here as Austin continues to hold on. Two minutes, 24 seconds remains here. And Austin just continues to try and take the top position but still holding on to that guillotine. Robert Johnson may have an opportunity to get out as he gets in the full mount. Now Johnson getting a nice opportunity. Posturing up, trying to throw some shots here from the top. And you can hear the corner of Robert asking for elbows to be delivered, but easier said than done as Austin Williams continues to clamp on here. Johnson continues to try and hold on to that arm. Williams gonna try and spin out of it. Now trying to get in the full mount. Now gonna land some nice shots there. And you can hear the corner of uh, Roberts telling him to stand up. And now trying to roll out of this, Johnson trying to throw some shots from the top, but now Scrambling around is Austin Williams from the bottom, and now Johnson is grabbing a hold of the neck of Williams, possibly setting up a rear naked choke here. Got to get that right leg underneath to spin, start getting things proper like. And you can hear the corner get on top, Robert, and trying to land some shots from the top, but Austin Williams with a nice sweep as he reverses things. And Robert's gonna spin around here, now get in the full mount position, try and land some shots. Several seconds remaining here. Not too far from it ending. And Robert's trying to pull off some last minute shots. 
Austin covers up and that will conclude this round. Let's take a look at the highlights from this round real quick. You see right here, it sets up with the guillotine. Austin Williams trying to finish things, but Johnson obviously being a very crafty fighter was able to get out of this. Eventually he popped his head out, was able to get in the full mount. Wasn't able to do too much damage there. But uh, you know, we'll see. Right here from the top. Williams is just scrambling around at the bottom. And that concludes that round. Ladies and gentlemen, the blue corner is no longer able to continue this evening. The official time comes at the end of round number two. Your winner by TKO, Robert Johnson. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Coeur d'Alene Casino Resort Hotel, Worley, Idaho, King of the Cage and General Tire present this three-round bout in the heavyweight division. Your referee in charge of the action, Tom Supnett. Introducing first, in the Lucas Oil Blue Corner, standing 5 feet 11 inches tall. Official weight, 224 pounds. He represents Sacred Scars MMA. Ladies and gentlemen, from Moses Lake, Washington, presenting Kevin Sanchez. His opponent across the cage, fighting out of our general tire, red corner stands at 6'1", official weight, 261 pounds. He represents Team Iron Man. Ladies and gentlemen, from Post Falls, Idaho, presenting Adam Bomb. Cool. Here we go, Sanchez versus Cool. Here in the heavyweight division as we head off in round one. Amateurs taking center stage here. Outside leg kick for Sanchez. Sanchez lands a shot. Cool comes in with some combinations of his own. And now they will meet up. And Sanchez looking for that takedown and he gets it. He's gonna pop right out. Lots of uh, energy going on here. Oh, I think that's it. Cool took some major damage, but that's a good call by Tom Supnet. Just massive shots delivered from the top. Sanchez, what a beast. Let's take a look at the replay here. Cool comes in. They come to slug it out. No one was backing down. Sanchez starts to switch things up, says, I'm going to take this to the ground. This is where he starts controlling things, land some really nice slugging shots. I mean, he was out. That yeah, was a good call by Subnet. Ladies and gentlemen, the official time, 21 seconds of round number one. Your winner by knockout, Kevin Sanchez. Stan versus Rogers. Rogers in the red gloves and he stand in the blue gloves. Both fighters looking to slug it out here on the feet. And Rogers with a nice kick to start things off there earlier a few seconds ago. 
Now looking for that takedown as he stand. And Rogers looks like he may have ended up with it, but they're still on their feet. And great work done by Heastan as he's now trying to take the back of Rogers. Rogers trying to fight it off. Uh, oh man. Rogers in a very uh, tricky situation here. Any move could really mess things up. But he doesn't have his hooks quite in yet, all of them. But it's not like he couldn't finish it. It's not like I haven't seen that in the past, but you know, Rogers just knows he really needs to calculate every precise uh, step that he takes to try and get out of this. Sort of like the bow constrictor uh, effect. You know, the more you move, the more that, you know, that's able to slide in and able to choke you even more. But right here, you can see that he stands, just staying busy, persistent with it. Rogers is just in a situation of fighting this off. Right here, just continuing to fight. He stand off his back. He stand trying to hold on. Very persistent with this. Remember, tonight's event is being brought to you in part by Lucas Oil, made in America, sold to the world, and of course, General Tire anywhere as possible. He stand now starting to open up, trying to soften Rogers up a bit. And Rogers gets a little movement going on here, but not really getting a chance to showcase any of his skills. He stand is controlling the situation. Trying to get those six in, but man, it's Rogers is doing a good job thus far. But man, this has just been a very frustrating fight for Rogers thus far. The entire fight, he's been fighting He stand off his back. We're trying to get He stand off his back. Excuse me. Trying to spread him out, trying to flatten him out here. He stand. 23 seconds. Right now, He stand is going to just score probably some shots here, but this round definitely goes to He stand thus far. Rogers just needs to weather the storm here for another several seconds. That will be that. Great round by both fighters. He stand and Rogers. Let's take a look at the replay here. He stand gets this nice takedown. From here, he would ultimately control the rounds, trying with those submission attempts, the rear naked choke, flatten him out a couple times. Was able to get up, posture up, and land some nice shots from the top. Obviously, he stands going to take that round, no problem. So now we go into chapter two between Rogers and Heastan. Spinning back kick. Heastan tries to throw a knee. Now Rogers trying to take it to the ground here. Giving up his back again, a very dangerous and risky situation as he stand looks to maintain control once again in this round. More shots from the back. He stand looking to finish what he started in the last round. Getting that opportunity once again, but Rogers has fought him off pretty well so far. But that could be only a matter of time. And Rogers getting spread out here. This is just the beginning of the end in certain situations. And right here, it looks like this seems gonna get it. That's it. Rogers taps. Rogers tapped. We can see it. Let's take a look at the replay. 
Stan comes in, takes it back to the ground where he knows, you know, where he was able to work things in round one and take control. And what right now we want to see is if he tapped out. Rogers saying he didn't tap out. I'm not quite sure how to call that. Ladies and gentlemen, the official time, one minute and 18 seconds of round number two. Your winner by tap out via rear naked choke, Brady Bam Bam Heastan. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Coeur d'Alene Casino Resort Hotel, Worley, Idaho, King of the Cage and General Tire present this three-round bout in the heavyweight division. Your referee in charge of the action, Tom Supnet. Introducing first, in the Lucas Oil blue corner, standing six feet three inches tall, official weight 233.5. Six pounds. He represents Spokane Valley Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from Spokane Valley, Washington, presenting Daniel Gadley. Here's his opponent across the cage, fighting out of our general tire red corner stands at six feet two inches tall. Official weight. 242 pounds even. He represents no excuse MMA. Let's Ladies go, and gentlemen go. from Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, presenting Nick the Issue, Mason Holder. And here we go, round one. It is the battle of the heavyweights here. Nick Mason holder in the red tape gloves. And Daniel Gadley in the blue gloves with the nice takedown of Mason holder. Gadley trying to get up on top here, trying to work that old school Kamara. Mason holder says, no, I'm not gonna let you try and get that. But in a really dangerous situation indeed. Gadley looks like he's gonna, uh, Get up on top here. Gadley just trying to look for control here in the top position. Trying to work that old school Kimura. Can he get it? Look at the key lock. Nice big right to soften him up a bit here. Now posturing up once again in the full mounted position here. Mason Holder trying to buck him off there. Gadley still on top. Picking every shot, every nook and cranny there. Leaving Mason Holder to guess. Gadley, man, just such a tough guy to get off of you, especially at this weight. I mean, it's probably proving to be very difficult for Mason Holder at this point. And Gadley just leaves Mason Holder guessing in every position that he goes for, whether it be a submission attempt or to land a couple more shots, whatever the case is. Yeah, he's working that arm now. That's it. Let's take a look at the replay here. Man, just like that, things end. Sets it up. He was cranking on it for a while, and right here, Mason Holder, I don't think, really had a chance to, to tap. Ladies and gentlemen, the official time, one minute and 48 seconds of round number one. Your winner by verbal tap out, Tenyo Gadley. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Coeur d'Alene Casino Resort Hotel, Worley, Idaho, King of the Cage and General Tire present this three-round bout in the welterweight division. Your referee in charge of the action, Tom Subnet. Introducing first, in the Lucas Oil Blue Corner, standing six feet two inches tall, official weight, 170.4 pounds. He represents 
Sacred Scars MMA. Ladies and gentlemen from Royal City, Washington, presenting Cody Islanders. Here's the opponent across the cage, fighting out of our general tire red corner stands at six feet tall, official weight, 172 pounds. He represents Trevor Prangley's AKA. Ladies and gentlemen from Spokane, Washington, presenting Brent Fisher. And here we go, round one, Eilers versus Fisher. Fisher in the blue gloves, I mean red gloves, and of course Eilers in the blue gloves. Eilers starts things off with outside leg kick, pays for it though. Takes a shot to the dome. But that doesn't stop him from moving forward as Eilers shoots in for that takedown. Fisher trying to stuff it. And he gets it. Great job done by Eilers. Eilers looking for a little bit of control here. Looking to posture up. Fisher uh, scrambling around, doing a good job. Trying to push him back at bay, and now he's in the full guard. Trying to land some shots. Once again, we're here at the Coeur d'Alene Casino Resort in Worley, Idaho, for the, another night of MMA action. Brought to you in part by Lucas Oil, and of course, General Tire. Right now, Eilers continuing to take the back of Fisher. Putting Fisher in a little bit of harm's way here. Trying to utilize that fence to get Eilers off. Eilers staying persistent. Trying to sink in that left arm. More uncomfortable than anything for Fisher at this point. And now things change up a bit. Eilers just continues to smother Fisher. Fisher hasn't really had an opportunity to showcase skills, and as I say that, he stands up and they are on their feet. It's a great job done by Fisher, and now they are free. Fisher looking to go to work now, looking to utilize those hands. Fisher knows he doesn't want to go right back to the ground. Things got a little haywire down there, and now about to take, take him down to the ground here. Both fighters continuing to fight off the cage here. Fisher looking to finish this round a little strong here and a nice left there. Backs Eilers up a bit. Eilers seems to have a little bit of the reach advantage here. We haven't seen too much of uh, Fisher able to land some shots here. Just a couple. But uh, rightfully so, been shaken up a bit by uh, Eilers, just smothering him in the earlier parts of round one here. That concludes round one. Let's take a look at the replay here. Both fighters start off on the feet here. And this is where Eilers was able to get that nice takedown eventually. Here he controlled most of the round. Fisher was left to scramble here, left to guess, as Eilers continued to maintain control and position in the top position, landing a couple of nice shots as well. To Coeur d'Alene Casino Resort in Worley, Idaho for another night of MMA action as we head off into round two between Eilers in the blue tape gloves, and Fisher in the red tape gloves. And we are off. Eilers had a nice takedown in round one. I'm wondering if he's gonna try and get back to the ground or if he's gonna be comfortable on the feet. Time will tell. And he's gonna shoot in, like we mentioned, there we go. And he's gonna get it on demand there. Now trapping the arms a bit is Fisher. Eiler pops right out of that. And now looking to go right back to work here from the top.
right here just maintaining, continuing to press forward here, making it very uncomfortable for Fisher. Eiler's just looking to go to work, but man, Fisher, you know how tough he is. Withering the storm of Eilers. Eilers is just continuing to smother him. Continues. But a very tough fight for Fisher. Struggling for a position. We have a little bit of blood, of course. I'm sure that's coming from Eilers. And now Fisher is starting to take his turn of events here. Fisher getting some nice shots in there. Taking the back of Eilers. Here we go. Things start to change here real quick. It's a little over 20 seconds on the clock. Rolling over. I don't think there's going to be enough time left. But a great effort nonetheless by Fisher. Take a quick look at the replay. A lot of action going on here. Eilers was able to take it back to the ground again. Ultimately, there'd be a nice scramble. Things would change around here with Fisher trying to pull off the arm bar, showing his ground game skills as well. Right here, maintaining control as he takes the back of Eilers. Now, Fisher could continue to keep this game up. You know, this may even the scorecard, and quite possibly, uh, you know, he could take the decision, but it's all counts on this point on. It's got to be perfect. It's got to be flawless going into the next round. We'll see how that all pans out. As we head off into round three between Eilers and Fisher. Tom Supnet, the third man in the cage. Here we go. Both fighters content with standing up here. Oh, it lands a nice shot on Eilers, and I think that's it. They are going to call it. Eilers is out. Fisher, the winner. Man, what a war. Let's take a quick look at this replay. Eilers just steps in, takes one on the jaw, feet wobbles out, and that is it. Ladies and gentlemen, the official time, 13 seconds of the third and final round. Your winner by knockout, Brent Fisher. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Coeur d'Alene Casino Resort Hotel, Worley, Idaho, King of the Cage and General Tire present this special three round bout in the welterweight division. Your referee in charge of the action, Randy Silva. Introducing first, the Lucas Oil Blue Corner, standing six feet two inches tall, official weight 172 pounds. He represents Sacred Scars MMA, Free Wind Martial Arts, and Imperial Jiu-Jitsu. Ladies and gentlemen, from Moses Lake, Washington, presenting Jimmy Mamba Molina. His opponent across the cage, fighting out of our general tire red corner, stands at five feet, 10 inches tall. Official weight, 169.8 pounds. He represents 
Trevor Prangley's American Kickboxing Academy. Ladies and gentlemen, from Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, presenting Cameron Robinette. Randy Silva, our rep for this matchup. Robinette in the red tape gloves and Molina in the blue tape gloves. A little bit of reach advantage. Looks like it's going to go to Molina, but you know what? Taking that away immediately is Robinette. And fighters continue to clinch up here. Molina showing that he's got some really quick hands. And Robinette just says, you know what? I'm taking that right out of the equation here and gets a nice little takedown. Robinette showing some really good ground skills here, showing some strength. Now working in from the half guard. Trying to cross over here. Now posturing up once again. And now right back into the full guard is Molina. Looking to posture up here possibly and land some nice shots. Robinette's doing a good job of sustaining it thus far. Robinette gets back to his feet, takes a knee for his efforts. But they're right back at it. Both fighters swinging for the fences here. Nice shots of exchanges. And of course, a nice takedown there for Robinette. Robinette looking to unleash some elbows as he continues to work Molina up against the cage. More elbows from the top. And continues to stay busy. Robinette looking to finish this fight. Molina surviving thus far. Robinette trying to posture up, staying busy with those nice knees. And Molina just trying to wither the storm here as Robinette tries to deliver some nasty elbows of his own. Final seconds remain in this round. Can he hang on? And yes, that he will. Let's take a look at the replay here, some of the highlights. Right here does a great job with that nice takedown. And this is where things start to get set up. Keeps going back and forth between these two. Right here, just a little bit of ground control from uh, Molina. And Robinette takes a knee to the body, then Molina takes a knee to the body. It becomes sort of an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth situation here. And Robinette just stays busy with those elbows. Ladies and gentlemen, the blue corner is no longer able to continue this evening. The official time comes at the very end of round number one. Your winner by TKO, Cameron Robinette. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Coeur d'Alene Casino Resort Hotel, Worley, Idaho, King of the Cage and General Tire present this three round bout in the lightweight division. Your referee in charge of the action, Randy Silva. Introducing first in the Lucas Oil Blue Corner, standing 5 feet 10 inches tall, official weight 154 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, from Walla Walla, Washington, presenting Chris 
One Punch Dempsey. Here's opponent across the cage, fighting out of our general tire red corner stands at five feet six inches tall. Official weight, 155.6 pounds. He represents Sick Jitsu MMA. Ladies and gentlemen, from Spokane, Washington, presenting Elijah Bear Ross. And here we go, round one. Randy Silva, our rep for this matchup. Dempsey in the blue tape gloves, and Ross in the red tape gloves. Ross, a very diverse fighter when it comes to wrestling, when it comes to taking his opponents down at will. Dempsey possessing just a little bit of reach advantage over him. But that has not been a problem in the past for uh, opponents when it comes to Ross. Elijah backs up, takes a shot to the chin, doesn't phase him. Waiting for that opportunity. Dempsey coming in, swinging. Right here, you can see that uh, Ross with a nice shot, tries to deliver a knee. Got that plum going, backs up. Takes another shot. Come a little stand-up war going on here. More shots delivered by Elijah Ross. Ross comes in with a big right. Dempsey takes another shot by Ross. Ross with the counter strikes here. Now going for it. The fighters starting to slow down just a little bit here. Rightfully so, exerting a lot of energy here in the earlier part of the round. So go for that inside leg kick. Spinning back fist, Dempsey gets back up. Ross with a nice outside leg kick. They clinch up once again. Ross doing a good job of those outside leg kicks, constantly delivering them. Dempsey with some nice strikes. Trying to keep Ross at bay. Oh, I think the back of the elbow caught him, and that is it. Eliza Ross with a nice knockout, just like that. Let's take a look at the replay. He really caught him on the side there. Dempsey comes in, and Ross just spins around, and I couldn't see from that angle, but it looked like the back of his elbow, just like the corner of it. And here we go. Get better. Love you. Ross comes around. Pick of the top. I'm not quite sure. It's so fast. Great job by Ross. Ladies and gentlemen, the official time, two minutes and 16 seconds of round number one. Your winner by tap out, Dudu Strikes, Elijah Burr Ross. Ladies and gentlemen, from the beautiful Coeur d'Alene Casino Resort Hotel, Worley, Idaho, King of the Cage and General Tire present this three-round bout in the bantamweight division. Your referee in charge of the action, Tom Supnett. Introducing first, in the Lucas Oil Blue Corner, standing five feet nine inches tall, official weight, 143 point eight pounds. He represents Spokane Valley Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from Spokane, Washington, presenting Je the Jedi Smith. <laughs> Here's opponent across the cage, fighting out of our general tire red corner stands at five feet ten inches tall. Official weight, 145.2 pounds. He represents Trevor Prangley's AKA. 
Ladies and gentlemen from Hayden, Idaho, presenting Dakota Alpha Male Shana. And here we go, round one between Smith and Schnall. Schnall in the red tape gloves and Smith in the blue tape gloves. Schnall, who's had a very successful outing in his professional career here at King of the Cage. Looking for another consecutive win. And right here, getting taken down by Smith. Schnall defending this takedown attempt by Smith. Smith looks like he's gonna get it, but looks like Schnall's trying to set up a triangle. Smith fighting it off. Nice scramble as he grabs the arm, and now setting up a nice triangle. I think Schnall may have this. So quick, Smith is gonna really have to fight this off. It was really hard to tell from that angle, but Smith still has an opportunity to roll out. Schnall was trying to get a hold of it, but this is a very dangerous position, giving Smith not that many options as he's gonna take a couple of shots. But so far, Smith is doing a good job of holding Schnall from unloading some shots to his dome. And an excellent job done by Smith getting out of harm's way. And now making him pay. Wonderful transition of events here. Smith starting to score now. Smith staying busy. He was warned not to go to the back of the head. And he was hitting him on the back of the head and they got to break him free. And that's a, that's a shame for Smith because, man, he was in such a great position. But what's fair is fair and rules are rules. So Schnall will get to benefit from that. Schnall coming in with some shots. Smith trying to take it to the ground. Schnall stuffs it. Now getting to work from side control possibly as he tries to lift up. Pushing him back to the half guard is Smith. Nice little reverse there by Schnall. Schnall trying to posture up, now land some shots again. Schnall trying to take, stay busy, trying to take the back of Smith now. Smith having to fight off Schnall. Things get a little tricky here. Schnall trying to take the back completely, trying to sink those hooks in. Trying to spin around, getting him off that cage. A minute and 14 seconds to do so. He's got plenty of time now. Smith is going to have to fight him off. Already exerting, oh wow, there we go. That's it. Schnall taps out Smith. In the final remaining moments of round one, just like that. Wow, let's take a look at the replay. How this all unfolded, right here. You see in the beginning, he was setting up a triangle. Smith was eventually able to get out of that with some nice sweeps, reversing things. And then put Schnall in a world of trouble for a second, but like I said, Smith was able to get out of that. But here's towards the end. Schnall kept his wits about him, stayed patient, stayed focused. And when the opportunity arose, he was able to take advantage of it. And this is where the fight would end. Smith tapping out just like that, sunk it in like that. 
We throw it to Dean Stone for the official announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, the official time, three minutes and 43 seconds of round number one. The winner by tap out via rear naked choke, Dakota, Alpha Male Snow. Here is Rocky, The Rock Sherwood. And Rocky Sherwood making his way to the cage here tonight. Big boys taking center stage. Once again. Once again, we're here at Coeur d'Alene Casino Resort in Worley, Idaho for another night of mixed martial arts action. It's been several years since they've been hosting it. And uh, we're absolutely appreciative of that support over the years. Sherwood getting an opportunity to get in there with the big boys and slug it out. And remember, tonight's event is being brought to you in part by General Tire. Anywhere is possible. And of course, Lucas Oil, made in America, sold to the world. Make sure to find us online, social media outlets all over, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, the list goes on. Or you can just log on to kingofthecage.com and find all of those there as well. And we are missing a mouthpiece here, so they're gonna go ahead and grab that real quick. Definitely need that before you get in the cage. It's also known as dental insurance. Here we go. The final checkups by Tom Supnet, a veteran of the Navy and now a veteran of MMA. Also coached uh, a gym back in the day. Several students under his name that he used to coach and be in the corner as well. So he's been in all aspects of the sport. Here is Jordan Curry. Jordan Curry making his way to the cage here tonight. Fell just short of a victory over Tony Kryptonite Lopez. Was able to go a very long distance with him. And just, man, he just wasn't his night. But it was such a great fight, close fight between the two. And now Jordan Curry is back, man. This is a great opportunity for him to get right back in line for title contendership as he just had an opportunity with the title. And you can see Trevor Prangley, former light heavyweight champion here at King of the Cage as well, in his corner over at the uh, AKA Academy. And the team of Jordan Curry tonight. And of course, uh, you can see in the background there earlier was Killian Estes, one of our current amateur champions here at King of the Cage. Jordan Curry is just about set to get in there as the big boys take center stage here tonight at Coeur d'Alene Casino in Worley, Idaho. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen from the Coeur d'Alene Casino Resort Hotel of Worley, Idaho, King of the Cage and General Tire present our co-feature belt of the evening. Sanctioned by the Coeur d'Alene Tribe in conjunction with King of the Cage Incorporated. President and founder, Terry Trebilcock Jr. Matchmaker, Parker Estes. Promoter is Mike Lowe. Three judges scoring this match will be Colby Kingsbury, Cordell Chun, and Stephen Smith. After the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Randy Silva. And now, Idaho, put your hands together for a co-feature of the evening. Three rounds of MMA in the heavyweight division.
Introducing first, in the Lucas Oil Blue Corner, standing six feet three inches tall, official weight, 249 pounds. He represents Tom Mann's MMA, record 1-0. and Ladies and gentlemen, from Hubbard, Oregon, fighting for the 501st Airborne Infantry Unit out of Fort Richardson, Alaska, presenting Rocky the Rock Sherwood. His opponent across the cage, fighting out of our general tire, red corner stands at 6-1. Official weight, 227 point. Two pounds. He represents Trevor Prangley's AKA record, and even seven and seven. Ladies and gentlemen from Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, presenting Jordan Curry. Once again, your referee in charge of our co-featured bout, Randy Silva. Three rounds scheduled. And here we go, round one between Sherwood and Curry. Sherwood in the blue gloves, Curry in the red gloves. Curry, a very well-rounded fighter, has some great striking ability, very quick on his feet for his size. We have a low kick, but Sherwood shakes it off. Curry, a very calm fighter. He's the so calm, he makes you scared. <laughs> Great personality, but Curry tries to wind up. Nice takedown. Trying to get in the full mount position here. Crossing over, trying to tap him out. Searwood, that's it. Curry makes easy work of Searwood tonight. Man, it's just like Sherwood just rolled over and said, no, thank you, I don't want none of that. And uh, Curry just made it simple work of it. That's it. Ladies and gentlemen, the official time, 45 seconds of round number one. Your winner by tap out via head and arm choke, Jordan Curry. Idaho, are you ready for some women's MMA? Please welcome to the cage, Nicole Johnson. Nicole Johnson making her way to the cage here tonight in our main event of the evening. Here at the Coeur d'Alene Casino Resort, Worley, Idaho. It's taking some time for them to get out here. There we go. And here we go. Going to be a battle here tonight between these two women who are proven to be very tough fighters. And every time they're tested in the cage, they've literally brought it. And uh, expect fireworks tonight as she gets in the cage with her opponent. And tonight's event is being brought to you in part by Lucas Oil. And of course, General Tire. And remember, you can find us on Facebook, social media, and more. You can always log on to kickofthecage.com and find out where we're at. And follow us and find out when we'll be in your town next. Here is Elizabeth Phillips. Elizabeth Phillips, a veteran here at King of the Cage, a veteran of the UFC as well. And it's good to have her back. 
a very tough fighter indeed. And we are glad to see her back here at King of the Cage being able to take on as the main event. She's a very dangerous fighter when it comes to the stand-up game. Johnson brings a very good stand-up game as well, but obviously Elizabeth Phillips has been on the big stage. She understands what it's like. So basically this is like another day at the office for Phillips as she gets set, prepared to go to war against her opponent, Nicole Johnson. Phillips, who has had a, a great outing here at King of the Cage as a pro. And, uh, you know, tonight she's getting that opportunity to get that title. And rightfully so. She's earned her place immediately here at King of the Cage. So we'll see how this all pans out. And here we go. We are just about set. We are just about set to get things started here. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Coeur d'Alene Casino Resort Hotel, Worley, Idaho, King of the Cage and General Tire present our featured bout of the evening. Sanctioned by the Coeur d'Alene Tribe in conjunction with King of the Cage Incorporated, President and Founder, Terry Trevilcock, Jr. Matchmaker, Parker Estes, Promoter, Mike Lowe. Timekeeper at the bell, Ryan Hay. The three judges scoring this bout will be Colby Kingsbury, Cordell Chun, and Stephen Smith. After the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action from Boise, Idaho, Tom Subnet. And now for all the fight fans in attendance here in the great gem state and the millions watching around the world. Idaho, let's hear it. This is our main event of the evening. Three rounds of MMA in the women's bantamweight division. Introducing first in the Lucas Oil blue corner, standing five feet six inches tall. Official weight, 135.6 pounds. This Komainu Reno City kickboxing Charles Gracie and Nevada Muay Thai fighter has a professional record of four victories with four defeats. Ladies and gentlemen from Reno, Nevada, presenting Nicole Johnson. Her opponent across the cage fighting out of our general tire red corner stands at Five feet, five inches tall. Official weight, 145.6 pounds. This AKA fighter has a professional record of six victories with six defeats. Ladies and gentlemen from OMAC, Washington, presenting Elizabeth Phillips. Once again, your referee in charge of our three round women's main event. Tom Supnet now with the final instructions. Okay, you need to follow my instructions at all times and defend yourselves at all times. Keep it clean, but keep it exciting. Touch them up. Good luck. And here we go, round one. Between Nicole Johnson in the blue tape gloves and Elizabeth Phillips in the red tape gloves. Elizabeth, a very hard striking fighter there. Able to knock her opponents out at will. And Nicole Johnson, we haven't seen too many of her fights um, here at King of the Cage, but Phillips, we've seen her in the past. And Phillips obviously only gets better every time she gets in the cage, and so we're looking forward to this matchup. And Nicole Johnson looking to put a stop in it, but Phillips immediately with a nice takedown. Phillips working from the full guard. Hello. 
Trying to posture up, Nicole Johnson doing a good job of avoiding any damage thus far. Continuing to get those shots from the top. Elizabeth Phillips just trying to create space. And now she's back up, trying to get gain side control here. And that she will get. Great job done by Phillips at the scramble. Nita Belly right into the full mount. Many positions to go to from here. Possible arm bar, lift up, nice shots from the top. Trying to sweep things is Nicole Johnson, but Phillips is maintaining balance here. And a great job at that. Johnson doing a good job of holding on. Possible hopes of the uh, ref stop, standing this up. Johnson continues to try and pull that right leg out. Trying to pass off into the full mount. Cole Johnson holding her back though. If Nicole Johnson continues to hold on, it could be a chance for her uh, top supnet to have to stand her up. One minute, 49 seconds remains here in round one. So far, it's been Elizabeth Phillips' fight, maintaining control in this matchup. Tom Supnet on top of the action. Phillips trying to punish. More shots to the ribs. Shots from underneath. Nicole Johnson trying to fight from underneath, but Phillips fights back and lands nice on the ribs. More shots. Johnson trying to back it up there. 55 seconds remains. And Phillips is controlling this. Johnson just in a very puzzling situation, trying to get out of this. And Phillips just continues to take advantage and land some nice shots. Johnson rolls out. Phillips looking to posture up and land some more elbows. been a very, uh, very aggravating fight, I'm sure, for Nicole Johnson trying to get out of this and looking for the stand-up but never quite got it. Phillips, here's the final 10 seconds of this round. Trying to score some last minute points and that concludes this round. Phillips with an excellent job in round one. Let's take a look at some of the highlights here. This is where Elizabeth catches her with a nice right, eventually sets her up and takes her down to the ground at will. Shoots in, Elizabeth goes on instinct and gets a nice takedown there. And this is where the remaining parts of the fight would happen. Let's take a look at another angle as she takes this. And welcome back to Worley, Idaho. Coeur d'Alene Casino Resort as we head off in the next round of our main event of the evening. Between Elizabeth Phillips. And Nicole Johnson. Nicole Johnson in the blue tape gloves. Elizabeth Phillips in the red tape gloves. Immediately comes in with some shots. Yeah, 
Elizabeth trying to land some shots there. Nicole Johnson in the last round was pretty much controlled by Elizabeth Phillips on the ground there. Nice body kick by Nicole Johnson, but pays for it dearly as Elizabeth Phillips takes it to the ground once again. It's a very bad position for Nicole Johnson to be in. She wasn't able to really fight off Elizabeth Phillips, but in the minds of the judges, I'm sure they see that as maintaining control, and thus this is not really a good place for uh, Nicole Johnson to be if uh, it's gonna be the same outcome as round one. And whether those shots were damaging or not, or whether she scored a lot of points, like I said, in the minds of the judges, they're looking at it as keeping the aggression up and keeping the control of this fight. Elizabeth trying to posture up, trying to land some more elbows, but Nicole Johnson has done a really good job at the offense department of avoiding any major damage. Tom Setnet has seen enough. He's going to stand him up. Both fighters will get to finish it on the feet here. Here we go. Phillips with an outside leg kick. Combination to follow things up. Nicole Johnson with a nice knee to back things up. Smith has got some heavy hands, but Johnson needs to watch those takedown attempts. Elizabeth very strong when it comes to that. Nice shot delivered by Elizabeth. Nice big right delivered by Elizabeth once again. Nice outside leg kick for Johnson. Mixing things up, they clinch up once again. Elizabeth will be looking for this takedown once again. And we obviously know that she was controlling the pace of the fight once it was on the ground with Nicole Johnson. More knees. And you can see Elizabeth is trying to set up that takedown, possibly. She crosses over here. Johnson delivers some nice knees and now switching things up. And they are free once again. She's hurt. We got the 42 seconds remains in this battle of round two. So far, both fighters bringing it. Elizabeth scoring some really heavy shots, scoring points in that department. Continues to circle on the outside here. Takes another outside leg kick, comes in, couple shots, backs right out. Johnson tries to make her pay for it. Out of harm's way is Elizabeth. Final seconds remains. And a nice takedown for Elizabeth for some last minute points there. Let's take a look at the replay. Right here, a nice takedown by Elizabeth. And right here, you can see Nicole comes in with some nice shots. 
Elizabeth backs it up, almost shoots him for that takedown. They swoop a little bit, and that is it. Just a war on the feet between these two in that round. Right here, you can see that they just constantly going for it. Really trying to throw it all on the line here tonight. So we'll see how things pan out in the next round. Tom Supnet, our ref for this matchup, as we head off into round three. It's been a war between these two. Elizabeth in the red gloves, and of course, Nicole Johnson in the blue tape gloves. Nicole continues to move in. Elizabeth not backing up. Great head movement by Elizabeth. Getting out of harm's way with, and, and being able to land those shots in the midst of things. Tonight's event being brought to you in part by Lucas Oil, made in America, sold to the world. And of course, General Tire, anywhere is possible. So far, both fighters content on the feet. No one really trying to take this to the ground. I really believe that this is one of those fights where one fighter is trying to prove to the other, hey, I got heavy hands too, just as heavy as you have them. And they slug it out here a bit. Elizabeth with a big left. Nicole fights back with that nice kick. Elizabeth continues to circle on the outside there. Nicole just looking to size her up, trying to land those kicks. But you know, every time she throws a kick, you know Elizabeth is right there to grab it and shoot in for the takedown, and possibly waiting for that opportunity once again. Nicole coming in with some more shots. This could be the tiebreaker. I mean, we got a pretty even fight. I'd say Elizabeth is probably more than likely a couple points ahead here in this fight. Landing some really uh, nice, impressive shots to leave a lasting impression in the minds of the judges. Already at the halfway mark of this fight, final round here. Two minutes and 40 seconds remains. Elizabeth slugging it out. Now the action begins, slugging it out, knowing this is the final round. Throwing it all on the line. Nice knees displayed by Nicole Johnson. Exchange takes a kick for her efforts as well. Shoots in, Elizabeth gets that takedown, scoops her up, just like that. Great job done by Elizabeth as she tries to work from side control here. Looking to cross over is Elizabeth. Trying to posture up. A little over a minute left here in round three. Plenty of time for uh, Elizabeth to be able to score some last minute points here. Continuing to take the back of Nicole Johnson, not giving her an opportunity to get up here. Still pretty tall, pretty tall. Let's sit back, sit back. 
Cole Johnson tries to get her, her feet. Elizabeth holds her down. Fifteen seconds remains. This fight is about to be over here, and Elizabeth is trying to score as many points as she can. It's a great time to do it. Let's take a look at the replay here, some of the highlights. He slugged it out. Elizabeth trying to get some shots in there. It's very tough. Nicole comes back with a nice kick. And of course, the takedowns by Elizabeth, I think, is going to win her this fight. That probably is a determining factor here in this matchup between these two, no doubt. Right here, Nicole gets a nice couple shots in there. Elizabeth gets a nice uppercut. A little bit of dirty boxing going on. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of women's MMA here in the Gem State, we go to the judges' scorecards and all three judges at cage side. Colby Kingsbury, Cordell Chun, and Stephen Smith score this bout exactly the same way. 30 to 27 for your winner by unanimous decision, Elizabeth Phillips. Elizabeth Phillips wins our main event here at the Coeur d'Alene Casino Resort Hotel. Top three rounds, how do you feel? Um, actually, I feel pretty good. Um, I wish I would have tried to go for the armbar. I had it right there and I kind of just played it safe. Um, she has a good bottom game, so I was kind of, there was a reason to play it safe because, you know, she had a really good uh, back game. Yeah, it seems like with that kind of an opponent, you wanted to play it safe. Right. And I know you wanted to stay on the ground for the portion of the right. complete three rounds, right? When I had a chance to, uh, you know, take it to the ground, I had a lot of uh, chances to go for takedowns. And I have a background in wrestling and jiu-jitsu, so um, I got to go for the takedown up there. And it certainly was. Anybody you want to thank your performance tonight? I know a lot of people got you prepared for this event. Yeah, I want to thank my boyfriend, Chris Holland, who's been backing me this whole time. I really appreciate him. Uh, Sam and uh, Killian Estes, they've um, been working with me a lot at AKA. And also Joel and uh, Daniel Swain, they were cornering me and I train at Warrior Camp too. So I just gotta thank uh, Emma Parents and, and all my coworkers, everybody, and all, all my friends that came to watch. Uh, I, I just really appreciate and I thank you all for supporting me. And of course, taking the cage and Coeur d'Alene, I know you wanted to mention that as well. Yes, <laughs> great venue. This is an amazing, uh, beautiful casino, beautiful venue, and I just feel really pleasured to be here. Well, it's a pleasure to have you here. Elizabeth Phillips wins our main event. That's going to wrap things up from here at the Coeur d'Alene Casino Resort Hotel. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you at the final.